Hello my arcade friends, this is Arid. In-game name is September on the Thunderwing as well as the public test server and soon to be the Nui server Fresh Start. In this video what I'm going to do is recap my 4.5 public test server findings and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about things that I like, things that I hate, and some things that I'm just unsure about. There was actually a lot of surprises in my uh, last four hour live stream I did there on Twitch. But for the sake of getting you as much information as possible in the shortest time, I'm going to condense it all in this video. First, as of March 28th, 2018, the public test server has been updated with the 4.5 patch. This isn't the Fresh Start version. However, those who are playing on the Fresh Start, like myself, there's still going to be a lot of information that is still going to be relevant. Uh, there's tons of changes, some I can't even begin to explain in a short video like this one. So Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a patch, uh, a link to the patch notes in the video description. And what I'm going to do in this video is just focus on the stuff that I found in my first four hours of playing the public test server uh, as I went about my normal routine when I like to explore new things. Okay, so first up is the daily login tracker. It looks like what we got was some more rewards up to 28 per month instead of the normal 25. Additionally, the rewards, at least for this month of March, shows that uh, we have some better prizes than we've had in the past. Uh, like this vocation hastening scroll here on the 12th and the 26th. Then we also see the return of the elixir of insatiable greed. Uh, that's showing up on the 18th and the 25th login along with uh, two 500 labor potions on the 21st. I personally love the variety and the access to older, less seen things like the Elixir of Insatiable Greed potions since those have not been around since uh, year one of Arc Age. On top of that, the daily prizes, uh, there's a shakeup here. So check out the seven day reward. Uh, so I'm highlighting in here what it is, is the Blue Salt Manual. This item will give you a 50,000 proficiency boost for 30 minutes. Now what it does is it lets you select what type of boost. So there is three categories. One is for like crafting, one is for like miscellaneous like larceny and artistry and commerce while another one is for like farming, logging, and the like. This is a very good item to help those who need to craft a particular item and don't quite have enough skill. I've, I think this is by far the most handy item that I've seen in this login tracker. I, I, I mean, absolutely. Uh, the 14-day reward here that we have is a romance table, which should make uh, some of you house decorators very happy. And then, of course, on the 20... 21st and the 28th login, those aren't all that great, offering you uh, superior armor and weapon tempers. But hey, there's a little bit of something for everybody. Next up is stacking. Now, this one really caught me by surprise, and I'm very happy about it. Most crafting components now stack up to 1,000. This can include things like ingots, logs, charcoal, lunarite, hereafter stones, mysterious garden pounders, alchemy oil, regrade braziers, archaeum trees, and somehow even majestic and m mining drills have made it into the list. It, it actually may be a little bit odd that I mentioned this, but I am so happy about this. My storage bags are really, really liking this change, and honestly, this is one of the most pleasant surprises for me in 4.5. Next up is regrading and feeds. If you've been paying any attention at all to 4.5 news, you likely know that the regrade rates have been changed. All items below Epic um, have about a twice as much chance to go up from the base uh, than what they do now. Uh, what this means is that all normal crafted items and dungeon and quest items will be guaranteed to get up to at least Divine with a superior yellow or superior red regrade charm depending on which category. If that wasn't enough to ease the pain of gearing up, additionally, the regrade cost in gold have been changed across the board. You might note that I did a video with the 4.0 cost uh, not too long ago, so we have that information to compare it to. So what my research has showed is items are using up to 50% less gold 
at the lower tiers. And then once you get to the higher tiers, it is still lower, but it, it tapers down to like 10% less. Now also, that being said, the chances of uh, regrading are much better and the costs are much lower. The one caveat to the new 4.5 regrade system is that now each regrade attempt costs 50 labor, which uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a five times increase and it really may affect those people who like to do uh, regrading in mass. Another nice change about the regrade system is the new crystallization mechanic. We've called this broken or damaged, uh, but the official term now is going to be crystallization. So in the past, Arcage took a really a hard line stance after a certain grade. If you failed at your regrade attempt, which by the way was completely random, uh, you lost your item. Now you do not lose that item, but instead it becomes crystallized. So here is a quick rundown of what a crystallized item can do and can't do. So first of all, what you can do with it, you can still use that item as a weapon or armor with no negative effects or damage reductions. Uh, you can still gem and ungem it, and I'm talking about Luna gems here. You can still use tempers on it. You can still sell it to a vendor if you wish, or put it on the auction house. And finally, you can still use it to feed XP to an Aranor item, and it doesn't have any penalties. You know, like a non-crystallized versus crystallized, the crystallized and the non-version provide the exact same amount of XP. What you can't do with it is you can't upgrade it and what I'm talking about here is like taking an Ionad to Aranor once it becomes crystallized in the Ionad form it is frozen there forever um, or like for example Delphinod to Ionad you get the idea also you cannot attempt to regrade it anymore uh, once it's crystallized it's locked there at that grade whatever it was you can't salvage it for Archeum so you can't use an even stone on it and you can't resell it to pick a different version um, and that when I'm talking about reselling I'm talking about using a transmuter on it uh, to where like if you have a, a quake shield and you want to resell it and get a wave shield uh, you can't do that because you can no longer resell it so all in all the regrading changes actually look good and appear to cost less and be less of a pay to win mechanic than they have been in the past. We still got a ways to go in Arc Age, but good changes in this category nevertheless. Next up is the crafting commission system. Now this is one of those systems that I really wanted to work or be a lot better than the current implementation. So the way the system works is like this. Uh, all you have to do is find an item that you want to craft or you can't craft in your folio. And then if you have the materials in your bag, you can create what they call a commission request ticket. And there'll be a little button down here at the bottom. Then what you do is you take that request ticket to a community center and post it up as a job for somebody to do. So the process of creating this commission request ticket does cost a little bit of gold. And when you post the job for somebody to do, uh, you're allowed to say how much you're willing to pay or bid for that work to be done. All that sounds great. It sounds just like you would expect it to do. Uh, the problem with this system is how much it actually takes out of the system in gold. So for example, when I was testing this on the test server, I put a request in for help making 40 silver keys. Uh, I posted that I would make, I, I would pay 500 gold per comp combine. Uh, so the total cost for these eight combines, that's uh, eight times five, that equals 40, uh, 500 per was 4,000 gold. Now mind you, this is the test server again and gold values are different. But anyway, the point is my friend Mac took the job and uh, she completed the job and instead of getting 4,000 gold, uh, which is what I offered for the job, she only got 2,080 gold, which basically means that's a 50% tax or 50% overcharge in what I offered to pay. 
In other words, the, the, the system is essentially costing both of us, I guess, 50% of the job value. So this board was such a cool thing, but to take that much gold out of the game um, basically makes this system almost worthless. I mean, I've been racking my brain, and the only possible use I can see for the system as it is currently implemented is if you have a very valuable item like, let's say, an Ionad, and you need help getting that to Aranor. So the way that arcades traditionally worked is you either had to skill up your crafting profession, whatever it was, or find somebody you trust enough to hand over your Ionad and pray that the person crafting it uh, would give it back to you after the job is done. The commission board actually removes that trust barrier from the equation, but at a very, very high cost. All right, so since I mentioned the keys in the last section, let's could just go ahead and talk about it here. Uh, so what I'd like to do is talk about the copper, the silver, and the gold keys. I've actually got some good news and some bad news. Uh, so first of all, in the good news, in 4.0, the cost to ca craft a key is 10 ingots per key. So in 4.5, the cost to craft is 18 ingots for five, or 3.6 ingots per key, which is like a 60% less, you know, ingots per. However, there's actually two changes to the system that makes it maybe a little bit worse than it was before. First, the labor cost. In the new system, five keys takes 150 labor uh, before any proficiency reductions. In the old system, currently in 4.0, it only takes 50 labor to make 10 keys. This means the copper key labor cost are now 30 labor per key, which is up from five labor per key. What is more is that silver keys with a similar labor cost increase now require the previous key to make. So let's talk about silver keys. So instead of 100 silver ingots equaling 10 keys, in uh, that's 4.0, you actually now need 10 copper keys and only 36 silver ingots. Um, but you've already got six times the labor in the cost to craft the copper keys, which only compounds the labor cost of the silver keys. Now, gold keys are an addition to the game, and those will be used to open up these special rift-style mobs that spawn after killing a world boss in certain zones. Uh, these are actually a new item, so we really can't compare them to anything. But you should know that the gold key also requires the silver key and will be following the same pattern. Now before I leave this subject, the theory crafter inside of me wants to answer one question. Should you make keys now or wait until 4.5 comes out? Well the only way I can answer this is by putting a value to labor, which I don't usually like to do. But let's say you assume that labor is 10 silver per labor point. And taking the case of the copper keys, in the 4.0 system, that means you need a 100 copper ingots and 50 labor to make 10 keys. Now, I did a quick search on the, uh, North America, and copper ingots are going for about uh, 40 silver each. So a stack of copper ingots are worth 40 gold. And if you add in 10 silver per labor point, 50 labor, that is 45 gold to make 10 copper keys. Now, if you look at it in 4.5, uh, you'll only have 36 ingots to make those 10 keys, but you'll need 300 labor. So pricing everything the same in 4.5, you'll have 14.4 gold in the copper ingots, but you'll have 30 gold in the labor, which means that <laughs> that the, in the new system, it's gonna be 44.4 gold in the new system, which the old system is 45 gold, the new system is 44.4 gold. Uh, this amounts to another XL change, not change. And if, you, if you're deluded enough to think that these mofos over at XL aren't running these numbers when they make these changes to these systems, you're off your rocker. The only thing that this does is it shifts the demand from the raw materials to the labor. 
And there's some very weird things when you start talking about labor in our game. Next up is character stat save slots. So in 4.5, what we're getting is the ability to save two additional stat migration builds. Um, so this actually was a change I was a fan of when I heard about it, and I'm happy to report, aside from using up three additional skill saver pendants and a little bit of time, it isn't an overly expensive mechanic to engage with. Quite simply, the way this system works is it allows you to save different stat migrations, making it much easier to switch between builds. So if you want to be a tank in one of your stat migrations, you might, you know, pony up for strength and stamina or whatever. I'm not really sure what the stats or the best stats for tanks are, but let's just go with that. And then other times you might want to be somebody like me and play a mage. Uh, then you can save another whole set of stat migrations, you know, putting everything into intelligence. This prevents you from actually gimping your character, which was the number one thing that I hated about the stat migration to begin with. Kudos. So unlocking the secondary stat set cost one skill saver pendant, which they've renamed to something like stat pendant or something, something, but it's the same thing. Uh, and then if you want to unlock a, a, a third set of stat migrations, that actually requires two of those pendants. So one for the extra tree and then two more for the third tree. Uh, so those pendants are really a, a cash shop item, so be warned about that. They typically sell for 1,250 credits, which is one apex. But I also am happy to report that the, the skill saver pendants had in the past been dropping from RNG boxes, which means the auction house sell value is actually much lower than an apex. So it's not quite $10 or however you want to think of it not quite an apex so right now on north america um, i looked and the skill saver pendants are selling for 350 ish gold which is a far cry from the thousand gold from an apex so you know not too bad okay so last on my list of the day one findings is uh skill changes now i'm actually not going to get into this very much because it, it really isn't my thing uh, if you are really interested in finding out about the skill changes coming to 4.5, uh, there's going to be a post on the official forums, there's information on Omnom, but you also want to check out Jalan with the Paradox Gaming Network. He's got some serious uh, discussions, he's a, he's a PvPer, so he knows all about that stuff. What I want to talk about here is just one skill in particular, and it may change the way you play Arcage. Now I found this skill by complete accident and I'm not sure if others have discussed it, but uh, I haven't seen anything on it so I'm going to talk about it. So in the Aramancy tree there's a new skill called Banishment. Uh, I'll try to weave in some footage here on showing you this skill in action uh, while I talk about it. But basically what this is, is it's an AOE skill, it's got like a radius of like, I don't know, 20 meters, about the size of uh, the old Meteor Strike, maybe a little larger. Um, and it applies a DOT or DOT to the mounts, damage over time, and uh, any, it'll apply any to, to any of those mounts pets that, that are in that AOE or area of effect. The cast is instant with a 45 second cooldown. What it does is it does 200% damage over 10 seconds to the mount or pet. Which, if you're using the same math that I do, that's enough to kill a pet or a mount twice over. So the ramifications of this skill is going to be wrecking mounts in like Halcyona or Mistmaro. And also, there's something to talk about when you're doing sunken ships. Just in case you're not aware of it, a submarine is also considered a mount and is 100% susceptible to this skill. And remember, we're talking percentages here. So even if you've got some godly, you know, mythic tiered pet armor and uh, you got 50k health or something, the dot is a percentage and it will tick a percentage. And so what I've seen in my testing is that within four ticks without any healing, that pet or mount is dead. 
Uh, also for pets with immunity, like the, what is it, the Nine-Tail Kitsu and the submarines, if you equip them right, they have immunity skill. Remember that those immunity skills only last a few seconds, and this dot is 10 seconds with enough damage to kill that pet twice over. Perhaps maybe a song crafter could keep a pet alive with some songs, but I have really found this as a very interesting skill which may provide some really neat changes to some of the raid PvP encounters. Oh, and uh, in case you're wondering, because I know those in my Twitch stream were, is I do not know if this skill will affect the, uh, the big raid boss mounts like the Wyvern or the new Red Dragon pet. Uh, but can you imagine if that thing did? Oh, <laughs> rip. All that said, unfortunately the PTS hasn't been very stable today, so getting test footage and some more material to report on hasn't really been easy. Uh, but please remember to follow me on Twitch and Twitter so you know when I go live and I'm doing some more testing. Uh, we're going to be doing some testing later today if the PTS is up, and for sure we're going to be doing some uh, testing on the Friday, my normal stream time. I'm going to be working on my Ionad and Erinor crafting spreadsheets, and I hope to release a 4.5 version before 4.5 actually goes live. Look for some updates on that, uh, and more testing from the PTS. Well, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you have found this information both helpful and informative. That is the goal of each video. Special credits to Al Hassan Muhammad, Facebook Vibe Skies, and YouTube Al Hassan Muhammad for the intro and this outro music. This video was edited by Arid. You can find me on Twitch TV, Arid underscore, as well as YouTube channel, Arid. Uh, if you'd like to support me, you can follow me on Patreon, Twitch, as well as if you would like a one-time donation, you can do that via Streamlabs. I'd also like to thank my current Patreons, Umut Khan Onal and Billy Cool, as well as all these Twitch subs that are listed here. Thank you very much. And then the one-time top donors, Riot Devil, Mac PTS, Ascendra, Eldern, and Wiccan Vape. You guys are all awesome. Thank you very much for the support. And as promised, I will recognize you in each and every one of my videos. So if you'd like to support me, please do so. Until next time, this is September saying, be well.